This is essentially ELEC 1510 lecture 20 video 2. In this lecture I'm going to talk about how to design state machines and how to simulate state machines in Quartus. Alright, so there's a couple things that we need to add on to our previous understanding of Quartus in order to work with state machines. The first being how to put flip-flops into a circuit. So here's uh, Quartus. I've got a new block diagram schematic open that's totally blank. I'm going to put some flip-flops into this uh, block diagram. Um, let's see, under primitives here, where normally we would go to the logic folder and find AND gates and OR gates and things like that, we would instead go to a folder called storage and find DFF, that's for D flip-flop. So let's put a D flip-flop in our circuit. We can also find JKFF, that's for JK flip-flop. We can put one of those in there. And finally, TFF for T flip-flop. So those are the flip-flops. Now as you can see, there are a couple extra pins on these flip-flops. There's the uh, clear pin and the preset pin. The clear pin Whenever you put a zero into that pin, the output is reset to zero. For the preset pin, whenever you put a zero into that pin, the output becomes a one. That's asynchronous and it doesn't depend on the clock. And that's the same for the JK flip-flop and the T flip-flop. If you leave those disconnected, they don't do anything. And the flip-flops default to an output value of zero before you've done anything. So essentially, in all of the problems that we are working with, we're going to uh, not use those pins at all. Okay, so let's design the simplest possible state machine that we can. We'll just use an input clock for the actual uh, clock input on the flip-flop. I'll just name that CLK and I'll connect that to the clock input. Now I'll have another input. I'll just call that D for the D input to the flip-flop. And finally, we need an output here. And so again, all we're simulating in this very simple state machine is just the operation of a D flip-flop. All right, so um, let's see. We have to save and compile. All right, so our compilation was successful. So now let's do a vector waveform simulation. So again, we need to insert all of the nodes in the circuit. We only have clock D and F. So we can insert those in there. So for the clock, I'm going to simulate 10 clock cycles, which is going to give me 10 rising edges. So when I go to the clock, I'm going to say the period is going to be 100 nanoseconds. And that will give me 10 rising edges. Okay, so now we need to basically insert the data stream that we want into D in order to simulate what the output is going to be. Um, that's not a clock signal, that's going to be basically we have to put in the data one by one. And what you do is um, you can highlight little portions of D here. So we've selected this little portion which covers the rising edge right here, and then we select one which puts that up to a one. Um, I'm going to leave the next rising edge at a zero, I'll leave the next one at a zero as well. I'll put the next two up to a one, which means I highlight that general area. Click one, now those are both ones. And then I'll have two zeros, then two more ones for the next two rising edges, and then a zero. All right, so now we have our clock signal, our input data stream, which is at the clock edges, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. And now we can simulate. Again, um, if you're using Quartus Prime, you have to go in and get rid of this minus no V opt, and then you can run the simulation. All 
All right, and so here is our simulation output. As you can see, at the first rising edge when D was a one, the output F from the flip-flop is now a one all the way until the next rising clock edge when D is a zero. So now F goes to zero for the next two clock edges. Then it sees a one at the next clock edge and stays a one and basically just works the way that we expect a D flip-flop to. So now let's take a look at simulating a more complex state machine. This is the state machine taken uh, from the second part of lecture 20 video one, where I did the state machine analysis to work backwards to the state diagram. So this has two JK flip-flops, as you can see. Uh, we've got an AND gate, an XOR gate, a NOT gate. We have our input X, we have a clock, and then we have our output state variables A and B. Um, so you can go back and look at lecture 20 video one to see how this circuit was drawn out. Uh, I've already compiled this, so we can just move directly to the waveform. So let's see, I wanna insert every input and output. So I've got A, B, clock, and X. I'm gonna move clock up to the very top just because I, I like the clock to be at the top. I usually have, so as the order of um, nodes in the circuit, I usually put the clock, inputs, and then outputs. So for the clock, again, I'm going to simulate 10 rising edges. So I'll put a frequency, or I'm sorry, a uh, period of 100 nanoseconds in for the clock. Now for X, let's just use the input sequence, let's say zero, then two ones, then two zeros, then let's do three ones, then zero, and then another one. So again, all of these zeros or ones are referenced to the rising edges. It doesn't matter what happens in between the rising edges at all. So on the first rising edge, there's a zero, on the second, there's a one, and so on. So before we simulate, let's group A and B together so that we can see what the state is more easily. So let's group that and just call it state. So you also need to be careful that the variables go in the order that you want. From top to bottom, they go most significant to least significant. So A is more significant than B for our state. So um, this does work. All right, so now let's simulate and see how this turns out. Okay, so looking at the state diagram, we started off in state zero, zero. Then for an input of zero, we actually moved to state zero, one. Then for the input of one, we moved to state one, zero. For the next input of one, we stayed in state zero. For the next input being zero, we moved to state one, one. For the next input being zero, we moved to state zero, zero. For the next input being one, we stay in zero, zero. For, again, uh, input being one, we stay in zero, zero. Again, input being one, we stay in zero, zero. And then uh, input being one, we move to state zero, one. And then input being one, we move to state one, zero. So this is how you can simulate the transitions through the states of state machines. This one doesn't have an output, but you can easily have an output in your circuit as well and see the output on the waveform graph too.